am I this morning? This morning, I'm in beautiful Windsor, California. It's in, it's in the Napa Valley, not far from my house. So this is uh, not a bad drive here. Got ourselves a quick little tile job. Not bad. This was your view in the morning. Not bad at all. Let's go inside. I'll take you. Uh, yeah, birds everywhere. I'll take you in for a quick look to see what we got going on today. Here's the tile we're going to use. It's a little lighter. It's pretty similar to what's on the floor. Just a little bit lighter. I'm doing what's called a door slammer. This is uh, this is a rental. I got a rock in my boots. You always gotta check your boots when you walk on a gravel road. You're coming through somebody's hardwood floor, man. You track these little toe tackers. I gotta change that too. The dog went crazy. Um, anyhow, sorry to make you dizzy. So the homeowner did the demo. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna come in. And in such a small enclosure, I recommended that he tile all the way to the ceiling, and he agreed. So I'm going to run some half-inch tile board on that band above. I'm going to remove this curtain rod. This is the goofiest place to put a shower valve. Um, that's at my knees. I'm not sure why they plumbed it here. Like I said, this is a, a rental. 24 inches above the above the uh, shower tub here. It's weird, and they put a tub fill. Like you're really gonna take a bath in this thing, but those are not my blankets. But he brought them out. The homeowner brought them out, so that's cool. So they got this weird little bitty like foot soaking tub thing. They got a tub fill spout. Shower valve is 24 inches above. We're not changing any of the bright work. I'm just here to slap some tile on here and make her look pretty so he can uh, raise the rent. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. Before they had some kind of wooden trim here, I guess, I don't know. I may wrap it with the tile. Probably not though. Because then you're going to see an end. I don't have any. Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do here in just a minute. I'm not sure what I'm going to do quite there. Any hoozles, let's get back to work. Yeah, the dog locked himself in the bathroom. This is house is built on pier and post and it's kind of sinking in the soil and uh, yeah anyway the door swings closed and the dog used to have his food food and water in here and then the door snapped itself closed and he couldn't get out and he freaked out and chewed the snot out of the door the lady's cleaning I told her don't clean I'm gonna be making a mess but some people don't listen so this is not a how-to tile video. This is just letting you guys know what I've been up to. Been hustling. You know how it is. Everybody wants everything done before the holidays. And that uh, that makes me pretty scarce these days. So I'll uh, I'll come back here in a minute when we get a little bit done. So here's where we are. I came in and I cleaned all the caulking and former mastic off of there. I ran some half inch Wundabard. Wundabard on the top half. I did use a reinforced fiberglass tape on the seams. You can kind of see it coming through here. All right. The way this is going to lay out, it's going to be, uh, well, I don't know. I hope it's easy <laughs> it's not square this wall comes in here and that wall comes in a little there this house was built in 1883 I think it was 82 1883 something like that so nothing's really level nothing's really square but that's okay I've done that before I got a few of these little few little nips I need to knock out of here um, yeah yeah sounds good
and early, 7.30 in the morning. Put my keys away so I don't lose them. I got my beverage of choice today, it's hot chocolate. My commute to beverage of choice. Oh man, what a lovely day. Pomegranate tree. Oh, Boners Diaz. Bonjour. Oh shit, I almost dropped my hot chocolate. See, I'm multilingual. Bonjour, Moan Roosteroo. Ah, day two. It's the birds. Day two, he says. What a lovely drive in. I love getting here, uh, getting on the road early when it's dark. I don't like the fact that it gets dark at 4.30 in the afternoon, but, uh, you know, oh, bonjour. It is what it is. Let's go in and see what I got done on day one. Day one's rarely as productive as I like them to be. Because, you know, you got to, like, talk to people and play nice with homeowners and whatnot. Go over the scope of the job. I did drain the hose because I do suspect we had the possibility of very cold. Oh, buenos dias. That one's, that one's a Spanish one. Let me uh, figure out where the keys are. Anyway, day one, you got to kind of look over the different jobs and, and whatnot. One of these is the right key. I don't think the homeowner is home. home. I think they took off to their other house this week. Boners Diaz. Hello. Aces. Where's my chocolate? I need me chocolate. All right, this is where I left it, and this is why I left it where I left it, and let's talk about stuff real quick before I get the saw fired up. <clears throat> oh, man. So this is the way she came out yesterday. I didn't really pay attention to how many hours I had into this. Uh, likely, I think I have four and a half hours to get to this point, maybe five I think that sounds about right. Anyhow, um, there's a reason why I stopped here on this height. If you remember, I didn't do the demolition. He had his uh, he had one of his guys come in here with a hammer and a chisel and a cold chisel and broke out all the all the existing tile and they left this substrate up to here. Now that's not my ideal method. He did it to save money. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm a little froggy. Um, he did it to save money, and ultimately it does. I guess save him money in the long run because I'm not tearing things down to studs. If I had my druthers, I would take everything down to the tubifers and do the waterproofing myself from the tubifers out, um, which causes a little more cost because it's more time, it's more materials. He probably paid some guy, you know, 10 bucks an hour, 8 bucks an hour to come in here and smash these tiles off. A couple hours to do that, so likely he saved money there. Um, the upside to me, I don't know if this is really an upside, but you if you ever do work like this and you're not the one doing the waterproofing from the studs out, you write a, a rider into your service agreement or your contract that says that you are not responsible for water impinging into the wall because this tub was never removed, this substrate was never removed. I told them, I said, look, I know it didn't leak before, but when you're hitting on this thing, this house was built in 1880, you know, things move things tend to migrate um, and you're hitting on this thing with a hammer a bunch of times uh, two or 26 times and I'm not responsible for water leakage it is what it is you want to save money that way if any water is getting through these corners that's not on me because I didn't uh, waterproof it the way I feel would be waterproof to acceptable building standards so you write that in there, you make sure they see it, you make sure they initial that clause that says water ain't my problem and then you move on with your day and, uh, you know, it is what it is. <clears throat> a couple quick tiling tips. I always set the back wall first. Where your eye is going to look, you set your back wall first. Because then you run the tile all the way to the substrate. In both directions. And then when you come in with the side wall, you'll never see the grout line. You'll never see the grout line. Um, if you do it the other way and you make the back walls meet the side, you, you're never going to get it right. Because these walls... These walls move around a little bit, but um, only in the absolute best case scenario do your walls ever become perfectly straight, and you've always got to kind of fudge them um, to make everything lay flat, you know, so you don't have you don't have ridges and stuff. So do it that way. 
This is not a true 36 inches. Actually, this is fudged over about 3 16ths of an inch to the left. So I only had to cut this one side. Typically, I'll run the center course dead nut center, and then you work your way out to the edges so everything looks correct. However, for 3 16ths of an inch fudged over to the left, I just, I just did. And that's a full 12 inch piece. That's a full 12 inch piece. And that's uh, roughly a quarter inch less than a 12. Uh, the tip is, is you keep your cut edge into the wall. You always cut the same edge. Uh, you always, excuse me, you always orient the cut edge, the same cut edge towards the wall. So when you come in with your wall tile, it covers your cut edge. Now these are what are considered zero grout line in that I've got them butted up against each other, but you can still see a dark line here. Um, the factory puts a bevel on it. I don't know how well the light is in here that you can see that. You see there's a factory bevel here. And it, the, the 45 degree bevel kicks it back about a um, 32nd of an inch. <laughs> Do my math real quick. It's still early. <laughs> So, so uh, even if you butt these together with zero grout lines, you're still going to get a sixteenth of an inch grout line, and you'll see that um, there's just you're not going to really find any tiles that uh, that are cut square. Most of them are beveled, uh, but anyhow, it is what it is. Uh, he will steal a grout line. He wanted zero grout line, and I told him the only way you can do that is to get a solid surface and go with synthetic marble. But he didn't want to do that. So um, it is what it is. Oh, and last but not least, on the tips. <clears throat> When you're doing a glass inlay like this, it's my experience that you, you do the outside pieces first and then you do your inlay. You don't build, you don't build your inlay with it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason why, the reason why for that is if you're doing a zero grout line here, I'm just going to keep calling it a zero grout line. Ultimately it'll be a sixteenth of an inch. But um, as I've said a thousand times, this is an eighth of an inch grout line, these, this mosaic. And the, the way I felt, I feel that it gets the best orientation is if you do your border, you do your perimeter tile first, and then you can set these in here and you can really just kind of center them to the hole that you've made. Um, these are mosaics that come on a sheet. They're bonded to a fiberglass open mesh sheet that keeps their grout lines even. I'm not going to pull the glass tiles off and, and try to make it a 16th of an inch grout line to match everything else. That's just redonkulous. So it is what it is, um, and it is where it is. So the reason why I didn't go up higher, I'm going to run one additional 12-inch piece here. Should get me within about a quarter inch of the ceiling, which is fine. I'll make up the difference with a piece of molding or um, maybe even grout. The grout may be able to do it, but this is a true half inch. This is eight sixteenths true half inch piece of backer board. The stuff that you buy in the store is 7 sixteenths, which is a sixteenth of an inch less than a half inch. So I had to build it up. You see the tile, the, the, the seam is here. So the tile span, 50% of this tile spanned, oh, I got to get a new arm, um, spanned on the mother surface here. And then the added surface, you see there, there's quite a bit of gap there. So I didn't like that. Um, and it kind of is what it is. So what I did yesterday before I left was, uh, I troweled on roughly a sixteenth of an inch of mastic and it's dry today so I can come in in theory I can come in with another layer of mastic on there and it will make up this difference you see it's got a difference there so let's get the tile saw going let's get things crack a and I'll show you where I get here I should be able to have this all done by lunch so we'll see that's my plan <laughs> 